You've seen these two loops before, 80 centimetres diameter copper and 90 centimetres diameter aluminium. This time, I'm going to try and see if using two loops together improves the signal. I'm going to use one main loop and one passive element. main pieces of equipment used are the transceiver, it must emit a carrier, so I'm using it in AM mode, an attenuator, the minimum steps are 3 dB, but 1 dB would have been better, and a field strength meter. That's an amplified unit, so it's more sensitive than average. At one setting of the parasitic loop, the signal almost goes away. The transceiver is set to AM mode to produce a carrier. As proved in the theory books, there is indeed a null broadside to the loop and a peak off the ends. Now this is the arrangement. It's not ideal because the field strength meter is way too close to the antenna. The second loop is about 60 centimetres away from the main loop. Now it's nearly a metre and its effect is much less. I cannot get the SWR down to one. And I'll tune the antenna a little bit high. The SWR is probably about two or three to one right now. Now I'll move the second loop near. And the SWR's gone down to one. And there's quite a lot more radiation. The second loop is about 60 or 70 centimetres away from the main loop. And there is indeed much more signal. OK, we'll do the test again. We've now got just one loop. The other one's on the ground. Adjusting that to one, to one SWR. That's one loop alone. Moving the driving loop, so the SWR is quite high, we almost no signal being made on the meter. Now I've got the second loop, just tune that, resonate that, and there should be a peak on the meter. It's about 60 or 70 centimetres separate from the main loop. Now I've moved it to around a metre away. There's a very
very sharp knoll there. I can just see it on the metre. Again, it's more than before. Now I'm about one and a half metres. There doesn't seem to be much of, much of an effect, only, only slightly. And I can't see much on the metre. Now we'll try really close, we're about 30 centimetres away. And there seems to be quite a good peak. This is about 30 or 40 centimetres distant. Now I'll move it even closer, like 10 centimetres. And it's not as sharp. I think it's probably over coupled. When I detuned the main loop to a high frequency, where was it resonant? Tuning across the receiver, maximum noise was about 7.320 or 7.330 megahertz. That's about 130 kilohertz above my test frequency of 7.2. Do some measurements again. Transmitting with just the main driven loop. I've now detuned the driven loop and the signal's gone down to almost nothing. Now I've brought the parasitic loop up about 50 centimetres or so and we've now got output again. Now that's a little bit more, that's about 60 centimetre spacing. That's nearer to 80 and it's not so much. Okay, that's about optimum distance. That's about optimum signal with two loops separated about 60 centimetres apart. Now I'll apply the attenuator. That's the attenuator with 3 dB in. That's the attenuator with about 3 dB in. Now I'll switch the attenuator out. Remember, this is with two loops. Now we'll switch the attenuator back in again. What happens if I detune the loop more? With the driven loop resonating on 7.4 MHz, let's see if the parasitic loop can drop it down to 7.2 and result in more output than before.
metres apart. I can get a one-to-one -one SWR. The loops are about 20 centimetres apart. I can get a one-to-one -one SWR, but the field strength isn't quite as good as it was before. This is about 70 centimetres apart. So, I'll try the other way. I'll make it resonant on about 7.250 and see what effect adding the second loop has on the signal. This is a test with the main loop resonant on 7.250 with the parasitic loop to bring it down to 7.2. This is about 40 or 50 centimetre spacing. This is about 70 centimetre spacing. This is about 30 centimetre spacing. It looks like that on 7 meg, adjusting your main loop to be around 120 or 130 kilohertz above is optimum. Then, when you bring your parasitic loop to it, not only can you get resonance, but also maximum radiation. One test I did on receive was to set the main loop to resonant frequency. I then picked up the parasitic loop. I tuned it to resonance and I'd noticed that the band noise on the receiver had disappeared. It seemed that the secondary loop was sucking all the RF from the main loop. On transmit it had a similar effect. When I put the second loop near the main radiating loop, the SWR went way up. The next experiment was to detune the main radiating loop. I set it to a lower resonant frequency than normal. As expected, the loop being high Q, the meter needle went way down. Almost nothing was being radiated. When I held the second loop up to it, again the SWR went even higher. And adjusting its tuning didn't make a lot of difference. The breakthrough came when I set the main loop down to a higher resonant frequency. I put the secondary loop near it, like so, and I was able to get the SWR down to 1 to 1 again. And the radiated signal on the meter was more. Mate, what are you doing? Communicating with Mars or anything? Uh, not yet. Thought Wait. it was some type of metal detector or something. <laughs>